Today's video is an in-depth, detailed tutorial of the jump rope move called the Mick release. Keys to success for the Mick release. The number one key to success in my mind and what helped me was to simply just start. For me, I like to get things right the first time, and that's going to be nearly impossible to do with the MIC release or any jump rope move for that matter, but particularly the MIC release because you're adding a layer of complexity by not having one of the handles in your hand and throwing the rope to the side like you see me doing here in the background. It can be daunting, it can be intimidating to try this move, especially if you're a perfectionist. But what you wanna do is just start throwing the rope around and look at this tutorial or look at any other tutorial on the internet and see if you can mimic what they're doing. Just start, don't worry about catching the rope at first. Just try to get the overall motion of the rope going, even if you mess up. I put some clips in here of me messing up. Even if you mess up, just throw the rope around. Even getting those reps and throwing the rope around will help you. I remember it took me, I think I decided to wait for a couple years to try this move and that was a mistake because it came to me a lot faster than I thought it would, but you just simply have to start. I covered key to success too, which is don't worry about catching the rope at first, but I will expound on that. You want to get used to throwing the rope to your side. You're not going to catch the rope at first. Most people will not be able to do that. It takes some time to get the coordination and precision down. I still mess up. As you can see me doing here in the background, I still mess this up and I've been able to do this move for about a year now. Number three is what you want to do. This is more technical, but the way that I do it is I execute two twirls with my right hand, which is my dominant hand, and then I bring my arm back, my right arm back, while I am catching the handle or the rope. See, that's another point, is that you don't necessarily have to catch the handle. It helps. You can catch the rope right above the handle, and then you can make your adjustments and move your hand down the handle as you're jumping. But two twirls, you see me doing two twirls right there with my right hand, and then the rope comes back to you. So you're flipping the rope nearly upside down and then pulling the rope back to you. Number four, you want to use a rope that you don't necessarily care about or that you can know can take some damage. In this clip here, I'm using the Elite SRS Pro Freestyle. I think these days it's known as the Fit Plus. It's a great rope for the MIC release. A freestyle rope is a great rope. Some people like to use beaded ropes. I think that beaded ropes will work well. I don't, I don't use beaded ropes too often. I prefer to use the long handle four millimeter rope for this trick and most other tricks. But the key point is use a durable rope. The Lead SRS Fit Plus is a durable rope. You wanna use a durable rope. And lastly, to that point, what you don't want to do, unless you've already been able to get this move down, is use an expensive rope that you're worried about breaking. If you have a rope that's more expensive that can somehow do this trick, most expensive ropes, a cross rope, but RX spark gear rope, most of those ropes wouldn't be a good idea to use for this anyway because of the component breakdown of those ropes. You want to use a freestyle rope, but you don't want to use an expensive rope, some rope that you spent a lot of money on because it is going to get, you are going to drop the handles. You're not gonna be able to do this right away. And the handles of your rope are going to get damaged somewhat in the process of learning this trick. Lastly, and I don't have it on here, but have fun, just have fun with this. It can be frustrating to constantly trip up, to not be able to get the trick but remember this trick the mic release is one of the more complicated tricks i don't want to say it's one of the hardest tricks although i think it is up there in difficulty but you have to understand that it is a complicated trick it is a complex trick and the probability 
of landing this trick is lower than most other tricks simply because you are releasing one of the handles that adds exponential amount of variability to the trick which will decrease the probability so you have to th that you'll get this down so you have to think about this trick probabilistically rather than applying the same logic that you would apply to a more or a less complex trick than the crossover or even the double crossover or even the double under those tricks are much less complex than the mic release so remember to have fun remember how complex this trick is and that getting it down the first time is so abnormal so just have fun with it and think about it probabilistically and understand the sheer complexity of this move so that you don't get discouraged that you're not getting it down right away there's one move that you want to learn before you attempt to do the mic release and that move is the side swing what you see me doing here and you see that i'm not necessarily jumping through like you would with a regular side swing all i'm doing is a side swing on my dominant side with no jump you want to be able to do this because this is the base move for the type of mic release that we are going over in this tutorial we're not doing the mic release version where you throw it off of your wrist i'm not able to do that yet and i have not put much effort into learning that type of mic release mainly because i'm using a long handle rope and that version of a mic release is more appropriate for a short handled rope but you want to learn this base move here this side swing on your dominant side with no jump because that is the move that you are going to use to generate the momentum necessary to throw the rope out to your non-dominant side twirl the rope bring it back and properly execute the mic release with that being said my recommendation to you is if you are uncomfortable in any way with the side swing on your dominant side with no jump like you see me doing in this video is to get comfortable with this move first before you attempt the mic release that's just a recommendation you don't have to follow it but this move you see me doing here is absolutely necessary and being proficient in this move is absolutely necessary to getting this version of the mic release down now that you've got the side swing we're ready for our first progression and what you want to focus on here is getting the motion down over catching the rope once you get the motion down catching the rope will take care of itself but the motion is generating enough momentum to throw the rope to your non-dominant side twirling the rope twice twirling it upside down and then after twirling bringing the rope back to you with your dominant hand that's all you want to focus on in this progression All right, let's just go through this real quick. So what you have is the side swing. I'm using the side swing double to generate the momentum. I'm sort of chucking the rope out like you would with a rugby throw. And then I'm twirling and bringing the rope back to me. And don't worry, we're gonna go over this in super slow motion. So you see me throwing the rope out after generating enough momentum looking the rope in, catching with my left hand, and then going right back into a side swing double so that I can start again. So the first thing we're gonna focus on here is the right arm. This is me getting ready to throw the rope. You see that my right arm and my right shoulder is positioned in such a way that the handle of the rope is pointed skyward. And that's the handle that I have my right hand with the handle of the rope is pointing skyward and you can see my shoulder and my hand my arm are lit up here this is how you want your right hand positioned and this is how you are going to execute the rugby throw or a throw to the side so that you're releasing the left handle in this situation the handle that's in the left hand or my left hand if you're left-handed 
you're going to be doing this the exact opposite. So this is how the right arm and shoulder and hand should look. And now we're switching over to the left. This is how the left hand or your non-dominant hand should look. Remember, if you're left-handed, ideally you'll be doing this the opposite of what I'm doing. Your left hand is going to be your dominant hand. Your non-dominant hand should be under and should be creating a right angle with the rope. Should It should be perpendicular. So you see the rope, the rope is coming down to the handle. It's creating a right angle. This is exactly what your non-dominant hand should look like before you throw the rope out to your non-dominant side. And again, for me, that's my left side. So in this picture here, my left hand is getting ready to throw the handle from my left hand out to my left hand side. Now this is what you should look like. This is what your left hand or your non-dominant hand should look like in this situation here when you're getting ready to throw the rope. Now, one frame to the left, we're throwing the rope, we're getting ready to throw the rope. You see that the rope is curled in front of me and I want you to pay attention to my right. My right is starting to follow my left as I'm throwing the rope out. My right arm and shoulder is creating a right angle and the handle is protruding diagonally across my body because I'm getting ready to twirl with that hand. So this is how your right arm and your shoulder should look. It should look like a right angle, like what you see here, how the screen is lit up on my right hand. Your non-dominant or your dominant hand should be looking like a right angle here. This is exactly how your hand should be positioned. And in this clip here, I'm getting ready to throw the rope. We're gonna be switching over to our left or non-dominant hand next. The non-dominant hand should be looking exactly the way that I have in the video right now. It should be coming down in relatively a straight line. And if you look at my hand, my hand is just getting ready to release the handle of the rope. Right after this, you see how the rope is shaped. You see how the rope is formed. I'm going to be throwing the rope out to my left hand side. So the handle in my left hand is gonna be completely away from my body. It's gonna be completely away from my hand. As you're getting ready to throw the rope, this is exactly how you want your left arm, if you're right-handed, or your right arm, if you're left-handed to look. This is what your non-dominant side should look like. Now we're progressing to actually throwing the rope out. And this is the first frame where I have actually let go of the handle of the rope from my left hand. And I want you to focus in on my right hand and my right arm here. It's at virtually a 90 degree angle and I am just starting to control and getting ready to twirl the rope so that I can keep it under control. And that twirl is gonna come from my right hand manipulating the handle. But this is what, and again, I want you to focus in on the right arm, the dominant arm should look like here. Getting ready to do a twirl, you're just starting to execute control over the handle because that's the most important thing in this situation, in this move, is to be able to control the rope without letting it go all over the place. So this is what your right arm should look like as you throw the rope out to your non-dominant side. Focusing in on what the left hand and arm should look like in this situation, it's sort of a 90 degree angle depending on how you look at it, but my elbow is bent, my arm is bent at the elbow, and I've just let go of the rope. And what I'm striving to do here is I'm not chucking the rope out with no care. I'm throwing the rope out in a controlled fashion. You can see that from how my palm looks is that this is a precise, this is a finesse type move where I haven't thrown it out to the side quickly where it's a measured controlled throw. So when you're in this situation, this is what your left hand should look like right after you've thrown the rope. And when I say left hand, again, I mean non-dominant hand. So if you're left-handed, this is what your right 
hand should look like as you've just thrown the rope out to your non-dominant side. This move isn't only controlled by the upper body, there's also a lower body component to it. You'll see here that my left or my non-dominant leg and foot is turned slightly outward toward the rope. You want to make sure that you're generating momentum not only from your upper body, but that you are also generating momentum from your lower body. If your foot, if your non-dominant foot and leg are positioned in the same position as your dominant foot, it's going to be harder to generate momentum. I encourage you to think about how Mike Tyson talks about generating momentum with his punches. He generates momentum for his punches from his feet. The same principle applies here. You wanna generate momentum with your feet as well as with your arms. All right, pay attention to my right arm. My right arm, as I released the rope, I elevated my right arm and then twirled. And the reason you wanna twirl is so that the rope will eventually come back to you. And in the later part of this clip, you'll see that my right arm, I start to pull my right arm back so that I'm in an L-shaped position. And this is how you get the rope back to you so that you can catch the handle. But what you wanna do in this situation is position your arm the way you see me positioning it in this clip. And you want to bring your arm slightly up and do two twirls in order to control the rope and start to bring the rope's handle back to you. The left hand starts to become more important because you're preparing to catch the handle. Some people who are more skilled in this move to, can keep their arm down at their side, but for me, I like to keep my arm up so that I don't have to do as much work to catch the rope. You see what my hand looks like? I know at this point that it's only gonna be a matter of about one second until the handle starts coming back to me. So I've already positioned my left hand to be able to catch the handle or the rope near the handle. So this is what you want your non-dominant hand to look like so that you can prepare to catch the handle. Your non-dominant leg is important in this situation too. You see in this clip, my non-dominant leg is turned even further outward than it was in the previous clip because you need some movement at the hip. This is not only an upper body move like most other jump rope moves, this is a full body move. In order to throw the rope out to your non-dominant side and to be able to catch it, you have to do some lower body movement. My right foot in this situation hasn't moved much. It's more of a plant, more of a base. My left is doing most of the movement because I've thrown the rope out to my left side of my body. So remember, this is not just an upper body move. This is a lower body move as well, and you can make a lot of gains and make the move easier if you use your non-dominant foot to move your body. Now you saw in this clip that my right arm is nearly above my body, at least my hand is above my head. And I'm in this position because I've started, after doing my two twirls to control the rope, I have started to bring the rope back to me. And that's why I'm moving my hand back toward my head so that my hand is nearly behind my head. And look at my head right now, it is focused on the handle. I'm 100% focused on the handle. This takes a lot of hand-eye coordination. If you take your eye off the handle, it's going to be harder to catch the handle or to catch the rope near the handle. Another good point to remember is that you don't actually have to catch the handle if you don't want to. You can catch the rope near the handle and then adjust as you continue to jump. But I like to catch the handle to improve my hand-eye coordination and so that I don't have to adjust later on. So this is what you should look like as you bring the handle back to you. The left arm or the non-dominant arm is the most important part of this piece of the move because you're getting ready to catch the handle again. You can see here that my whole body looks like an L. My right arm is up in the air above my head and my left arm is outstretched with my hand ready to receive the handle. As I said earlier in the tutorial, some people, they can get away with not keeping their hand up for the entire move because they are highly proficient 
in this move but when you start doing this move you want to make it as basic as possible so i recommend keeping your non-dominant hand outstretched so that you can ensure you're prepared to catch the hand when it comes back to you left leg or non-dominant leg and this is key now that i'm bringing the rope back to me i've rotated my hips and i'm rotating my hips by using my left leg You'll notice that my right leg has stayed nearly stationary throughout this entire process, but my left leg is engineering my hip movement and the hip movement is helping me bring the rope back to me. You gotta remember that with this move, lower body is just as important as upper body. There's a lot of hip movement involved and there's leg movement involved so that you can generate the momentum to bring the rope back to you after throwing the rope away from you. So remember to move your non-dominant leg and to use that as the base for your hip movement. Now, focus in on my right arm again. I've successfully caught the handle and my right arm and hand are now below my head again, but they're in a sort of bicep pose. And this is the position your hand should be in after you've successfully brought the rope back to you and you've caught the handle. This means that the move is nearly done. You've successfully done it and you've used your entire body to generate the momentum necessary to execute the mic release. So again, this is what your dominant hand should look like. It should be in a quasi bicep pose. It should be above your shoulder, your hand should be above your shoulder, but it should not be above your head as it was in the previous clip. The left hand and arm, the focus areas of this part of the move. At this point, you have executed the catch and you have to look the handle into your hand and make sure that you've caught it. It's like that old adage that people used to say about baseball, that you gotta watch the ball hit the bat or watch the bat hit the ball. However, some people disagree with that and say that there's no way to do that because of how fast professional baseball players pitch or even anybody pitches once you start getting up to the high school level. But in this case, the handle is not moving all that fast. So it is possible to watch the handle go into your hand so that you ensure that you catch it before you move on to anything else. I would liken this to a wide receiver again another sports analogy who is catching a pass on the run and who forgets to look the ball into his hand before he starts running and then he ends up dropping the ball what you want to do is ensure with your eyes that you see the handle go into your hand that you make positive contact before you move on to the next portion of the move we're going to look at the non-dominant hand this time. So after you've caught the rope, you want to bring your head back to the front and then go right into a regular side swing. And this is why it's so important to know the side swing before you try this version of the mic release. That's why it's so important. You want to go right into a side swing like you always do. You want to bring your non-dominant hand under your dominant arm and then start the side swing process. But again, this is why it's so important to learn the side swing before you try this version of the mic release because I don't know how it's gonna be possible to learn this version of the mic release without learning the side swing because it's required for both the entry and the exit from the move. All right, right arm. What you wanna do with your right arm is make sure that your right arm is on top, even though your left arm is leading the charge here because it just caught the handle and you are trying to control the momentum that comes from ending the mic release move. To control the rope, you wanna ensure that your right arm is above your shoulder right here. Your hand is above your shoulder. You have positive control of the handle, even though the right handle has never left your hand, you still wanna make sure you have positive control of the handle. And then you wanna ensure that your arm is over top, completely over top 
of your non-dominant arm. So look at what I look like here. You wanna generally have this position so that you can exit the mic release successfully. And that is pretty much it in a nutshell. We'll look through the footage again in slow motion and we'll go through it again. You see that I'm generating my momentum. I'm doing two twirls, bringing my right arm back and then looking the handle into my hand to make sure that I catch it. Remember the wide receiver analogy. You don't wanna start running until you've caught the ball. The same goes with the handle. You don't wanna keep moving until you've caught the handle. You see how I'm looking the handle into my hand after I throw it and when the handle is coming back to me. Make sure you look the handle into your hand, just like if you're playing football, you look the ball into your hand. The hardest part about this move in the beginning is understanding the amount of force necessary to successfully rotate the rope so that it doesn't become out of control. The only way to achieve this is with practice and doing this over and over again. Progression two is adding the mic release to whatever flow you want to do, whatever freestyle flow you want to do. This is where you can harness the true power and truly the fun of the mic release because you can add it to whatever routine you do, whether that's a routine of complicated, complex freestyle tricks or you have the basics only down, which is fine. You want to add the mic release. You want to do a mic release and then go right into a crossover. The great thing about jump rope is that the possibilities are endless and the mic release is no exception. You can add it to any combination or permutation you want. Once you're comfortable with throwing and catching the handle as it pertains to the mic release, you wanna see if you can just do a side swing and then start jumping. You don't wanna to try to jump over the rope straight from the mic release yet, but take baby steps. See if you can throw the rope to the side, see if you can do some side swings, then jump over it. Once you can do some side swings after catching the handle and you can go right into jumping, that's when you wanna to try to start putting in some more complicated tricks. There are a lot of things you can do aside from going right into the side swing and the jump, like you see me doing here. You can step over the rope and then do a kickback like I did in an earlier clip. You can go from an EB side swing or an EB straight into the mic release. I have a clip coming up of that where I'll show you exactly what that looks like. But once you start getting comfortable, that's when you wanna start experimenting. What you wanna do and what is truly important is that you keep a hop in your step the entire time. I like to keep a boxer step type rhythm going on. You can see what my feet look like. My feet are always moving whenever I combine the mic release with a freestyle type flow. You see me throwing in there a crossover, but you see my feet are always moving. That's gonna keep the movement more fluid and it's honestly gonna make the move more fun. Now there you see me doing an EB side swing and I go straight into the mic release. That's one combo that I really like and one that you can try to learn too if you wanna throw some variability in there, but those two moves go well together. And here's another move that I did earlier that you can try. You can try stepping over the rope and then doing a reversal, moving around so that you're jumping backwards, then doing a kickback like I'm doing there, then doing an arm wrap coming back over, letting the rope come behind you, doing a backward side swing, and then doing a kickback again so that the rope is moving in a frontward motion, in a conventional frontward motion, then go right into a mic release. So there's a lot of things, honestly, endless things you can do with the mic release if you wanna throw it in there with your favorite freestyle move, your favorite freestyle routine. Now the grand finale, which is jumping over the rope straight after catching the handle. So you're not going into a side swing with this progression. This is the final progression because it's the most difficult. The reason why I put this after 
the mix in with the freestyle was because once you mix it in with a little freestyle, you get your confidence going and you can enter the third and final progression with more confidence. And also because quite frankly, for me, this progression, jumping over the rope immediately after catching the handle was the hardest part to learn. Let's go through this in real time. The only difference here is that I'm jumping over the rope right after catching the handle rather than going into a side swing. You notice that while I'm doing these consecutively, I take a break to do some jumps, do some side swings to get my bearings going. You'll notice also that some of my jumps over the rope are more smooth than others. Remember the variability with this trick, with the mic release is tremendous. It's hard to get the same amount of spin every single time. So be cognizant of that. Realize that you're not gonna get it perfect every single time. Even if you've been doing the trick for a long time, it's hard to get that amount of precision with your wrists to turn the rope every single time to get it perfectly. Some of my jumps are more smooth. Some of them I have to jump a little bit higher. Just remember that and be cognizant of that. We're looking at the trick in slow motion here. You'll see that it's similar to the side swing where I'm jumping off my non-dominant foot to start. I'm not jumping off both feet at the same time. It makes it easier to not jump off both feet at the same time, similar to the side swing, because it gives you more flexibility in your jump. Now, similar to what we did with progression one, we're gonna break down the important movements that each part of your body is going to be doing in progression three, which is jumping over the rope after catching the handle. Now notice my left hand, my non-dominant hand, same drill as before. I'm reaching out, making an intentional effort to catch the handle. My hand is wide open. It's not in a nonchalant position where I can have any possibility that I'm going to drop the rope. My hand is wide open, ready to receive the handle. If you notice my head, my head is oriented in the direction of the handle. This move takes a tremendous amount of hand-eye coordination. If you're not looking at the handle, it's going to drastically reduce the probability that you're going to catch the handle. Your head and your eyes should be oriented toward the handle that your non-dominant hand is going to be catching. And you should look the handle into your hands, make eye contact with the handle so you can ensure that you catch the handle because it goes without saying that if you don't catch the handle or you don't catch the rope around the handle, then you will not be able to execute the move. So keep your eyes on the handle and ensure that you look the handle into your hand. Now, this is important and this is different from catching the handle and going right into a side swing, catching the handle and not jumping over the rope because this time you're gonna be jumping over the rope. So what you wanna do in this situation is you're preparing your dominant foot to jump first and that's going to take preparation from your dominant foot so i'm preparing my dominant foot because i'm going to use my left foot my non-dominant foot to spring i'm going to use that for most of my jump but in order to do that i have to prepare to jump with my right foot first so i'm preparing to jump with my right foot all the while bringing the rope back to me and you have to prepare to jump before you catch the handle and this is where the coordination piece comes in this is where the move gets complicated because you're doing a couple different things at once you're preparing to catch the handle you're looking the handle into your hand you're bringing the rope back to you with your right hand and you're also preparing to jump if you don't prepare to jump and you jump when the handle or you prepare to jump once you catch the handle you will likely trip over the rope because there won't be enough time because the move happens so fast. So you need to prepare to jump with your dominant foot first. Awesome, so now you've caught the handle with your left hand. Once you've caught the handle with your left hand or your non-dominant hand is when you begin the jump. You see that my right foot has come off the ground 
And now that I've made positive contact with the handle and I'm sure that the handle is within my grasp, that means that I can turn my attention to the jump. Now, once I've turned my attention to the jump, look at my left foot. My left foot has started the process of propelling me off the ground so that I can jump over the rope. And remember, this is similar to the side swing where you want to jump off of one foot so that you can maintain your flexibility. Jumping off of two feet is gonna be more difficult in this situation and it's going to reduce your ability to move. It's gonna reduce your flexibility. So your dominant foot should be coming off the ground at this point. You should be bringing your arms down and you should be using your non-dominant foot as your primary means of jumping over the rope. At this point in the game, you're almost through. You've almost cleared the rope. The way that you clear the rope is by bringing your arms down as far as they can go so that the rope is as close to the ground as possible. The closer the rope is to the ground, the easier it's gonna be to clear the rope. If the rope is too high, it's going to be hard to clear the rope and you'll likely trip over the rope. So make sure that you bring your arms down like you're seeing in this clip here so that you have the maximum chance to clear the rope. Okay, you are almost through, but this is the most crucial part. You see that my legs are uneven in this situation and that because I use my left foot to begin my jump, my right foot is a little bit higher than my left foot and my right foot has already cleared the rope. But you'll also notice in the clip that my left foot has not yet cleared the rope. If you jump off of one foot and this is the same principle as with the side swing is that the foot that you use to jump with is going to be the foot that has the most chance of not clearing the rope. So you want to make a conscious effort to get that non-dominant foot over the rope. This is usually where I mess the mic release up is I've done everything right up to that point, but that I don't make a conscious enough effort to get over the rope with my left foot because my left foot, my non-dominant foot is my jumping foot. So make sure that in the beginning you may need to exaggerate a little more, maybe jump a little bit higher so that you can get accustomed to the muscle memory that it takes. And then once you practice it over and over again, you'll have a better intuition for how much jumping height it takes to clear the rope when you do the mic release with the jump right after you catch the handle. But you wanna get to the point where you can make it all the way through. Nothing is more frustrating than getting all the way through the trick and then getting your non-dominant foot tripped up over the rope. So make sure and ensure that you make a conscious effort to spring off of your non-dominant foot and clear the rope like you would be clearing a hurdle. And you've done it. Notice how I land on both feet and then I go right back into a side swing, right back into whatever freestyle or jump rope flow that I'm doing at that moment. And what I've done here is essentially incorporated the mic release with the jump over the rope like you see me doing here into my freestyle routine. And that one wasn't all that smooth. But remember what I said about the precision that it takes to get this move down. I like to make analogies to sports. I'll use basketball in this situation. You could have a great free throw shooter like Steph Curry. He'll make a swish one time on a free throw and then he might make the next free throw. It'll rattle around the basket a little bit and he might miss another free throw. He's about a 90% free throw shooter but even with as good of a shooter as he is, sometimes he misses and sometimes he makes the basket. He makes the free throw, but it may not be as precise as he wants it to be. He'll still make it, but it won't be a perfect swish. It'll rattle around a little bit. It might bounce off the front rim, go and hit the backboard and then go into the basket. So the same logic applies to this trick. Sometimes you're going to get the precision right. 
Sometimes you're not going to get the precision right, but you're still going to land the trick. And sometimes you're going to completely miss. You're not going to catch the handle. You will trip over the rope. It won't be as smooth as the other ones that you've done. So there's so much variability with this move, as you can see me doing here, that you just have to take it with a grain of salt and realize that once you get to the point where you've been able to do the move, you practice it enough there will still be times where you don't get the move exactly right, which is completely understandable and completely fine. You have to understand that there is so much variability and so much precision involved with this move that it's nearly impossible to do it the same way every single time. So think about the free throw basketball example that I had, even professionals like Steph Curry and some of the best basketball players out there, some of the best shooters out there, they don't make baskets every single time. They don't execute every single time. It's all about having fun. And truly, the reason I like the make release is because it's a lot of fun to add it into a freestyle routine and to land it in a chain and in conjunction with another trick. And that's why I like it so much. I would encourage you to just get started. If you are hesitant about doing this move, just get started, throw the rope around a little bit, follow the tutorial, try to mimic what I'm doing here. I'm not the greatest at the mic release. Obviously, you've seen me mess up in this clip numerous times. Nate KG has another mic release tutorial on YouTube that is very good and I would recommend watching that one as well. The more tutorials you watch, the more practice you get, the better you're going to get at it. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video today. I know that there are a lot of jump rope channels out there. There's a lot of jump rope content out there and you have a choice and that you chose to watch this video. That means a lot to me. If you want to continue to support the channel, you can check out some of my other videos on this channel. You can subscribe, hit the thumbs up button, and you can share the channel with somebody that you think would benefit from jump rope and health related content. Until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, jump rope to freedom. Peace. Thanks for your support and take care.